with us today, we got Joe, Trigger Joe Britson. All right, let's go. Boom! To try to get a matchup with a gun. Oh! Multiple occasions. Wow, it looks like they're gonna swing oh, the very end. And he wasn't kidding. Wow! It's very rare. What a finish! Another one. It really poses the question what do you want to do? Do you want to take a chance and risk getting knocked out? Oh my god! Oh my god. Try to take care of business, try to get the goal. Oh, it's a knockout! Oh my it's god! It's a knockout! And it's closing in! Trying to finish it! Hit it's over! Because I'm gonna take this foot and I'm gonna walk you on that side of your face. There's not a goddamn thing you can do about it. Oh, oh. Heck, heck, heck. Oh. Oh. Buck is brought to you by Mojo! Oh. Oh, we have a new nickname. Okay, we have William Send It Seven Piercing. All right, other than that, we used to call him Willie Pete. We used to call him the Mad Russian. I think you've had enough. No? Now you've had enough. Bitch. Wow! How good is this? Finish him! Another one. Everybody gets triggered. It's just if you become a pansy. Right? That's in the book of Brawl. I'm think not I... surprised, motherfuckers. You called down the thunder. Well, now you got it. week of the nfl now there is no ufc on saturday however i did hear from an outside source that the ufc has been promoting slap boxing in a different way joe are you tracking that incident oh about old dana oh dana he went another level in marketing and just slapped the shit out of his wife as like this is what slap boxing is all about so uh yeah First of all, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going to happen there. That's going to be ugly. All I've got to say is this. Dana White spoke at a Trump rally. He's got enemies. Okay, so he's not going to be able to skate underneath that one. I don't know what he's going to be facing, but it's, it's not going to be good. It's going to be an Andrew Tate thing. Wh whoever caught that on camera, um, there's got to be a lot of people on the left going, oh, thank God, yeah. that are going to that are going to. Burn the candle at both ends to make sure he gets in a lot of trouble. Because we were so. we were preaching in the choir about how Dana White's this awesome dude, and then he just like in public, just I mean now, 
Here's to all you Karen vets out there, because I'm going after bro vets later. All right. Karen vets, all right, you put your hands on a man, you want to act like a man, you're going to get a man. All right. So, again, I don't condone not a single fucking second what Dana White did. All right. But she did slap the shit out of him in public. Right. So, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know what, what, what was said. But, I mean, Again, it's, yeah, 2000, here's the thing. it's 2023. If we're, equality, if we're going equality and that happens and it's you and I and, I, and I'm and i playing the role of slapper and uh, you're playing the role of slappy, then counter slapper, what, what happens when the cops get there? That's all I'm asking. And I'm not trying to say I condone it, but if we're talking equality, then what happens? You know, right, it's right. Mean. So you're both get, charged with I'm you're both charged with assault. It. You're both charged with assault. Like you know, it's like right. it is what it is. So yeah, yeah. none none of that. Yeah, none, all that sucks. And uh, but I do I I do want to apologize for last week because the big girl did not did not do well on the NFL picks. However, my Seahawks mm. hit my Seahawks hit. But I will. The only game that I'll make an excuse about is since when do the Raiders and their backup quarterback go up and down the field on the 49ers defense? Right? Like, what about Philly? Well, oh, Philly, Philly was, yeah, they, I, that was a garbage game. They just turned the ball over. Um, but it's like, how do you, how do you let the Raiders go up and down the field on you? That was the game that hurt me the most. Uh, cause that was yeah, my who's quarterback in that team that day. Who was it? it? Uh, not gonna, not gonna, not gonna work here anymore <laughs> next year. Kaepernick? Like, was it Kaepernick? No, it was like beer stand or something. I don't, who knows? But oh, well, if you mean for the 49ers, fuck. But uh, hey, uh, let's, let's hey, let's get let's get this out of the way before we get into the uh, games. Joe. All right, let's. Oh, go ahead. Uh, let's let's roll with it. Before we get to the games, uh, I I do want to address the the whole point of the quit being a triggered pansy. All right, it's our signature saying. All right, it's the book of Earl's chapter. It's book. It's Chapter one, verse one, all right? Don't be a triggered pansy. The whole point of that is, is it's not a message to be political, all right? It's a message to the veteran population out there that one, we're not all the same, okay? Not even close, Joe and I aren't the same. Joe and I served in the same unit. We are not the same people, all right? Two, you drop the veteran card, okay? just like the race card or something else you're now you're speaking for all of us okay so don't drop that veteran card all right when you when you're just going to be a triggered pansy all right that is the last thing you should do and now i made a poll on big earl about what's worse a bro vet a karen vet or does it make a difference okay and the majority went karen vet which is understandable because it's mostly guys on the page but somebody asked me, what's the difference between a bro and a Karen vet? I go, let me put this very simple to you. It's the same thing as a bro vet except a woman. Okay? Oh, shocking. If all you're doing is trying to be relevant because you are a veteran, right? That's what a bro vet does. They wear a grunt style shirt. Okay? They put up a firework sign in their yard. And they want thank you for my freaking service everywhere they freaking go, right? And anytime the Army or Marines or Navy or whatever makes a change, they complain about how much how much harder they had it, right? They're, I got like, something for you on this when you're done. Yeah, yeah uh, and it's like, it, it, it's like, man, like, do you not realize that you weren't the superstar, okay? You weren't, all right? There's a few superstars. And they, and I wasn't one of them. Okay, I was, and I had a pretty good career. I still wasn't no superstar, right? Like I didn't, I didn't do anything crazy awesome. Okay, uh, but except step on the guy's head who shot Joe, I did do that. Yeah, he did. And, and then he said it. And then he said it when we were shooting a movie scene in front of a bunch of Hollywood types. Love you, Sam. But yep. the look on their faces when they asked Nick to say one of his. Things he remembers, and he remembered stepping on a guy's hollow head that got his head taken off in a firefight. Also, the man that gave me my purple heart five minutes earlier, and Nick decided to, hey, you shot my buddy, give him a kick, and uh, there's nothing in there. But hey, for all those people that throw down the veteran card, I swear 
on my last name and my children, the reason I joined the army and the reason I went was because I saw Band of Brothers. We got snowed in. There was, I mean, in Michigan, getting snowed in is, means a ton of snow. Nick's from Wisconsin. He knows what I mean. So I watched the whole thing in like two days because I had the box set. But when I watched We Stand Alone Together, which is the last episode HBO did with the real veterans who are still living, and then talk to them about what they did after they came home from freaking Bastogne and the Battle of the Bulge, and the vast majority said, I went back to work. I went back to the hardware store, went back to work. You know, I just figured life goes on. And these guys were in the Battle of the Bulge and inspired my life to take the trajectory that it did. They were relevant before they were veterans, and they brought something to the community by upping the standard. Not the other fucking way around. Don't be an albatross around good veterans next by being a shitbag. Also. Hey, you, you should be an albatross in golf because that's three under on a hole, but not a big deal. Um, so this is what I'm gonna legal. this is what I'm gonna get at. We're gonna talk about the Buffalo Bill Cincinnati game from last week real quick. All right, uh, not real quick, but uh, the, obviously we all know what happened, okay? There was a stud NFL player, all right, which he took a, a shoulder pad to the chest, and it was a hard hit on the offense giving it to the defense. However, it was still a good tackle, all right? This is a, you know, this is a free safety going after a tight end pretty much, a giant receiver, right? And, you know, it was, you could see the guy lower his shoulder into him. And then he rolls over on the ground, doesn't hit his head, doesn't whiplash anything, right? And then gets up about three seconds later, crumbles to the ground, right? And again, for those of you who have seen people die, that's what it looks like. It's not a, mm -hmm. it, it, it's not a, you know, oh, dramatic, you know, movie ending. It's There's a, nothing graceful about it either. It's a drop. Right, and it's usually not very dignified for that person. They literally lose control. Right. And so, you know, God bless the uh, assistant athletic trainer who right away performs CPR. And then, you know, they bring the ambulance out and they're able to bring – right now he's off his ventilator. And, but the first thing that big – the first thing that Big Earl did was I went to social media, right? And I just started monitoring because I wanted to see who thought that they should be fucking relevant at this point in time, right? And I wanted to see, like, what people were going to say with no knowledge of what was going on, okay? And all of a sudden, you got all these people saying, stop the game, NFL. But we all know as people of common sense that they should stop the game, Right. But you think you tweeting is like Roger Goodell's like, oh, okay, because you tweeted. Or not Okay, yeah, now I'll stop the game. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. Right, like, like no shit. We have never seen this before in the NFL. We've seen people go paralyzed. We've seen people rupture like spleens, that kind of stuff, you know, and where they have to get emergency, you know, taken off. So at first, when the NFL says like five minutes, we're starting because they didn't know what was going on. Right. And the coaches got together. They crossed the field. They're like, hey, this is what's going on. Right. And it's like, yeah, we ain't playing. Right. And that's absolutely the right call. OK, now here's where I'm going to get mad at the bro bets. Right. I knew right away that people would get bro bet on this. And they'd be like, that's, you know, that's why I can't stand when they compare NFL guys to Warriors. Because Warriors don't get to just call time out when somebody dies. You know, and it's like. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. Uh. Like, yeah, I got it. The NFL players make a lot more than a soldier. A lot more. Okay. There's a million freaking people in the Army. All right, there are 50 man rosters on 32 teams. You do the freaking math. Okay? These guys are warriors without a rifle. They are better athletes than almost 99% of anybody that serves in the military. All right? These guys of the world for that yeah, matter. Of the world. These guys do destruction without a weapon. All right? Literally their weapon is their body. Okay, now I'm not saying one is better than the other, but to you bro vets out there, you were lethal for multiple reasons. Okay, one, you had a rifle. All right. 
Two, you probably had air cover. And then you know who the bro vets also always make fun of? Pogues. Guess what else you had? You had logistics, homie. Okay? You make fun of Pogues all the time. The Pogues are the ones that are delivering your ammo. The Pogues are the ones, because technically a, a, an Apache pilot's a Pogue, right? That Apache pilot is getting your ass out of a firefight, okay? That pilot is getting your ass out of a firefight, all right? That chow hall that you get to go eat at is filled with Pogues cooking your food, right? And the bro vet's like, man, fucking Pogues, right? Like, yeah. and, and not not a one of them is going to be like, no, 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 send the birds back. We don't need the Apaches. We yeah, don't we don't need the Apaches. None of them have done that. Not We're ever, studs. not for any reason. We're not studs. even a little bit. So, hey, all the Apaches are here. Put your rifles down and watch. Yeah, for all you guys whining about how much an NFL player gets paid, just realize that they are literally less than .00001% of the population. Okay? They are literally anomalies into the human being. And just like a pitcher that can throw a 12-6 curveball, if you can locate it, you're going to get paid because you're one of the six people on the planet that can. Okay. <laughs> That's just, it's just the way it is. But uh, I know got off on my tangent there. And I told, I told our producer that I would uh, it's again, stop dropping the veteran card. Stop trying to relate the NFL to combat because you know what? It's not even close. Combat is a thousand times worse. Combat is a thousand times more brutal, but don't also don't fall into the trap of comparing yourself to an athlete, all right? An NFL athlete is what he gets paid for, okay? You want to talk about paramedics and CLS and putting in doing CPR? Do you know how many people are certified at CPR on this planet? Probably 50 million more, okay? Do you know how many guys can run a 4 4 at 250 pounds? There's like fucking 30 of them. Okay. Take a hundred pounds <laughs> off. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> like, like, I mean, that's what they get paid for. All right. Now all of a sudden we're acting like I've performed CPR three times in my life. All right. One successful, two unsuccessful. All right. One of them, I wasn't even in the army yet, but I still know how to do it. Okay. And it was like, does that make me a hero? Cause I know how to do CPR. Does it make an NFL player a hero because he runs? You know what? An NFL player is a hero to some people. Okay? Just like a soldier is a hero to some people. But not every NFL player is a hero. All right? Name me the five starting offensive linemen on the 49ers in the 80s. All right? You won't even be able to say one of them. Okay? Okay? All right? Doesn't matter. Get over yourself. Quit being a triggered pansy. There was a guy who died on the field, all right? They brought his heart back, right? And then now all of a sudden you see all these liberal news stations saying, pray, 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 okay? We love the NFL. We love college football. We love the UFC. Me as a warrior, Joe as a warrior, can actually appreciate the teamwork that they put in. All right? You have no idea unless you play competitive sports on teamwork. And you want to talk yeah. about being lethal in the military? You better be a team player. All right? You better, you better understand you join something bigger than yourself. You are a mm -hmm. team player. And you know what? I'll, let's, this is the last thing I before we go on to the games. Is... That when Robert died, when Kasor died, right, it was almost like Al Qaeda was like, this is back in Samara in 2007, right? You know, and they almost were like, we weren't going to give a shit about that. But I tell you what, yep. our, our chain of command put a team together. We were a team on that patrol base. And when we went out that night and the city decided that, oh, maybe they'll be all depressed because they're one of their battle buddies died. Wrong answer. Yeah, they got a response. They got a fucking serious response. All right. So again, NFL players are not soldiers. All right. And all most the majority of soldiers are not athletes. There is literally zero comparison. Zero. Okay. And probably 90% of you bro bets are Republicans. Maybe you should look at what capitalism means. Right? 
and understand that you get paid based off of your worth. Okay. You know, you know what happens when you're an E4 and you get shot? Joe, tell them what they do. Um, I got a purple heart. They give you another E4. Yeah. 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 You, you get a new one. You get a new one. All right. Not so much for quarterbacks and stuff like that in the NFL. Right? Myself <laughs> was driving the next morning, but, you know, that's not for everybody. Neither are these sick white frame shades I'm wearing, so the Lions are going to beat the Packers. Um, no, we'll, we'll get into but, that, homie. Yeah. Well, let's rock and roll then. Yeah, let's I'm, rock and I'm roll. Let's go. Loaded. Let's go. We, we got, this, is, hey. this is the hardest week to bet in the history of, of betting. Is This is the no, hardest week. Well, also, I appreciate the Saturday games because we have no UFC and no college football, and it's a little sad. So thank you, NFL, for that. Um, we got Kansas City rolling into Las Vegas at 4.30 on Saturday, and Vegas are nine-point home dogs with a 52-and-a-half over under. All right, here we go again. Like, what do I do here? All right, I have picked Casey as a lock two weeks in a row, and they've burned me. All right, they have burned me bad. Like, you go, you go, you go into Denver with a fired coach – and absolute disaster and squeak out a three-point win favored by 11. Yeah, got it, homie. Uh, I'm taking the Chiefs money line here. I'm not touching these guys. Not a chance. Chiefs money line are nothing, in my yeah. opinion. All right, we got Tennessee at the evening game on Saturday going into Jacksonville. Uh, Jacksonville right. six-and-a-half point favorites with a 40 over run. All right, Jacksonville is hot, bro. All right, they are hot. Uh, this is my first lock. Lock this game up, six and a half. Jacksonville is going to take this game, and they're going to take the division. Holy cow! Doug Peterson. Cover with the good hair. All right, we got we got uh, the start of the Sunday games. Baltimore going into Cincinnati. Cincinnati is nine-point favorites with a 39-and-a-half over. Yeah, Lamar's not going to play. Uh, and the Ravens cost me a lot of money last week with their BS loss to the Steelers. But uh, – I got the Bengals here nine and a half. I think they cover. I think they. I think they blow them out. I could very well see that happening, especially with Baltimore's been. God, and I say I don't. They don't like betting kryptonite. Uh, we got Carolina rolling into uh, New Orleans. New Orleans is uh, three and a half point favorites with a forty-two over on. Again, a game that's uh, depressingly not worth anything. Uh, maybe it should have been, uh, but I got the Saints here because I think their backups are better than the Panthers' backups. So I don't know. I'm gonna go Saints yeah, absolutely. here. Absolutely. I didn't know the pack. Uh, I didn't know the Panthers had two quarterbacks. But uh, all right, we got Cleveland going into Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is a two and a half point favorite with a forty over on. Yeah, something with the Browns here. I'd be curious again. The, the betting. I'm not. I don't want to get into it, but hey, cheers to the Browns for beating Washington. Okay, because uh, that opened the door for the Pack, right? And now uh, the 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 Pack they don't have to worry about any other games; they just got to beat the freaking Lions. All right, but uh, are they going to play Cooper? I don't. I don't know. Are the Browns going to play their studs? Uh, if not, the Steelers have been playing backups all year, so I'm going to go with Steelers at minus two and a half. So. I don't know. To get you a win with a no-name offense, I, I I have no clue who's on there. Najee Harris, and that's it. That's all I know. Yeah, but does he uh, even play? I don't know. Like, like right. Like, the, oh, the, yeah. hey, but no, they're, the Steelers the Steelers can still make the playoffs, so they will. They will bring this game home. I think they will. Yep. Hey, yeah. Hey, but, I, hey, let's go back. Let's circle back, we'll like Jeff Pasaki says. Uh, I have you been a Mike Tomlin fan your whole life? Hmm. I've always liked Mike Tomlin. I, I, yeah, so have I. And my bias got solidified when Ryan Clark was talking about when he yeah. had an injury. He was talking about how he had a life-threatening injury that he was able to overcome. And, however, the Steelers were like, well, we don't want to put you in the field yet. And he's like, Ryan Clark's like, so I assembled an entire team of doctors. And we went into Mike Tomlin's office. And he's like, make sure your mom comes too, right? And the mom shows up, okay? And the doctors are all there. The doctors give their prognosis that Ryan Clark's good to play. And he goes, okay, doctors, get out of here. And they left. And he goes, I'm not putting my son on the field in his condition. Mom, you got a problem with that? 
And mom's like, no, sir. Right? Like, I right away was like, I, I knew I already loved Mike Tomlin. But, like, it's like, wow. Yeah. Like, Ryan yeah. Clark's an all pro. <laughs> Oh, not, yeah. just a, oh, not, yeah. just, not just a good state, like, like all pro. Like, Dude, they can they can say there's all these politics in the NFL about head coaches, but here here's a stat I'd love to see pr- proven because I don't think there's any way you can disprove it. You win your locker room, you're going to have a job there for, for, for good. And you can tell his players absolutely would follow him uh, anywhere. And it's like, uh, who's the, the, the two fat brothers, the Re- Rex Ryan? I could never understand why he always and didn't you talk to see his players. And uh, Bart Scott said, if I had to go into an alley with another man at my back, it'd be Rex Ryan. And it was like, this guy played with Ray Lewis. You know, like like players, if they love a coach, then you're always going to have a job. Mike Tomlin is, uh, God, I wish he was a Lions coach some years. I Even so, though I love Dan Campbell. Yeah, so I want to lock the Steelers here. I, I, I think it's a lock. So, But I'm not going yeah. to, but I think it is. We got uh, Houston going into Indy. Indy's two and a half point favorites with a thirty-eight over under. All right, now the Colts. The Colts have lost six in a row. All right, and they got Sam Ellinger playing uh, starting QB. The Texans have been playing very well the last three or four weeks. Uh, Are they starting David Mills? I don't even know. So because if they start him, he's been playing better. Yeah, all I'm going to say is that this game is like one of the bowl games that are two teams that are just happy to be in a bowl game. Uh, yeah, like based the on their City st- Bowl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think the Badgers won that one year. Um, but uh, I, I, I'm going to go with the Colts here. I'm gonna, I, I just think that, that they're going to just play harder because it's at home and it's the last game. I, it's a, Again, I, I'm not touching this one, but I would go with the Colts if you had to. Absolutely. Uh, we got Minnesota going to Chicago. Chicago six point home dogs with a forty two and a half over under. Oh, the line's down to six. Okay, so yep. when I, and when I did, from this morning also, yeah, by the way, yeah, when I did my picks, that line was at eight, right? Yep. So this morning it was seven and a half, so it moved quick. The Bears one hundred percent cover eight points here, one hundred percent. The Vikings are injured. All right, the Packers beat them up pretty bad last week. But how, however, in the first like two drives, they lost two of their starting offensive linemen to include their backup center. So, as an objective football fan, about four of the six drives the Vikings had in the first half were stalled by the center getting you know false starts because he didn't know what was going on because he was a third string center. So oh. it was just like like uh, I gotta go, I gotta go Bears to cover here, maybe even an upset. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really sold on the Vikings, man. Especially what they looked like when they played Detroit. I mean, we we took their ass to the woodshed. So we, excuse me, Detroit. I don't want to be one of those guys that talks like he's on the team. All right, all right, all right New England going all into right, Shaner. Yeah, we got yeah. New England going into Buffalo. Buffalo is uh, seven point favorites with a forty three and a half over under. All right, lock number two. The Bills are going to absolutely destroy the Patriots. As we talked about earlier in my rant, if you don't think that Hamlin coming on there and doing this on screen for his boys in Buffalo isn't going to pump them the fuck up, right? Like, Buffalo is going to absolutely throttle New England in this game. (laughs) Throttle them. Put everything you have, the kitchen sink, everything on this game, all right? Over. These kind of comments frighten to me. Yeah. Over. (laughs) You like the over? No, no. I like I, – I, I mean, <laughs> let, let's, well, you only got a 43 and a half. The Bills might score 45. So, it's – I don't want to get yeah. – I don't want to get that over bet with the Lions from last week. Oh, God. Three points they, in the fourth when, quarter, Joe. Was, Three points in the fourth quarter? Really? Well, they scored 28 in the third. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really? Really? <laughs> Hey, when I was a kid, I wanted to brag about Barry Sanders winning the Russian title one year, and he took himself out of the game with 10 minutes to go and said, no, let Christian Aquaria get it. And I had to listen to this kid talk trash the whole day in school. It was a total NARP, that is a non-athletic regular person, um, and didn't really follow sports. But, yeah, it was kind of like that. Like, you really you are going to sit now? You're going to sit now and ruin everything? All right, we got the Jets going into Miami. Um, Miami's three-point favorites with a – 
37 over under. That's because, you know, Teddy Bridgewater's playing, you know. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, – well, the, hey, those of you watching, thanks for watching. We didn't say that. We went right into our tangent. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Say hi. Say where you're watching from. Uh, and remember, go to shop.veterantrashtalk.com or gruntworksclothing.com and put in the code VTTGW. Get a discount. All right. Yeah, the Dolphins game, this is a scary one. I also don't want to touch this, but – Again, they're not playing for anything. I got to go with the Dolphins here. I I, I think it's uh, – I like the under, actually. Yeah, you know, you got Teddy Game Manager in there, and uh, that's what he'll do. He just changed his name legally to that Teddy Game Manager, not Bridgewater. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. All right, so but, we got – we, we, go ahead. No, but the Game Manager threw a lot of interceptions last week, Game Manager. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe it was that shot to the – never mind. All right, we got Tampa Bay going into Atlanta. Atlanta is four-point favorites. Okay, so 40 over under. This year is making me sad watching Brady. Uh, if I will stick up for your Michigan boy when they started to say that, you know, I had a, I had a friend of mine say, well, you know, Tampa Bay is not that good. Like Tom Brady's done. Tom Brady drops 460 yards and three touchdowns. All right. Like, don't poke the bear. The best thing you could do if you're another team is just not say a word about him, right? Like, hey, yep. great to meet you, Tom. You're the greatest, right? And, like, whatever. Uh, right now, the, uh, Bulls is saying that they're all playing. So I don't know if that's a half. I don't know if that's a quarter. But I think even if they play a half, they beat the Falcons. So they're getting four. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I, I like an upset here. I like the Bucks as an upset here, especially if they start their starters like they're talking about. Yeah, I mean, if they put the starters out there and they've got it, they've got enough weapons and they're uh, somewhat healthy compared to the beginning of the season, dude. It's not a, it's not a mystery. Just protect Brady. Give him, right. a, give him a pocket for a second, and he'll chew up the Falcons. Yeah. Because he, you, you let him through. He's not mobile anymore, fellas. He's almost 50. All right. right. We got Arizona going into San Francisco. San Francisco is the biggest favorite of the week by far, giving up 14 and a half. And there's only 39 and a half on the over-under. That's crazy. They're two over, two tight, two tidy plus with an under 40 over under. Yeah. I, I don't like That's this. Not... The, the 49ers have to win for seeding. So they're going to play. Uh, they'll play their starters. They're going to go nuts. Um, yeah, that over under 40 is crazy. I, I, I'm going to go with the over here because the way that I think that if anybody rests anybody, it's going to be the 49ers defense. All right. They're going to rest some of their players. Like they're going to, like, and so I like the over here. I wouldn't touch that spread 14, man. That's crazy. Uh, but yeah. Uh, nope. All right. We got uh, Dallas going into Washington, the rivalry game. Uh, Washington is seven point home dogs. And uh, there's a 40 over under. I love this because Washington benches Heineke, starts Wentz. Wentz the, throw the, like all you had to do was bet against him or bet for him or bet the game that Heineke played in, and you know you don't bench that guy, right? For Carson freaking Wentz. Wentz throws three picks, puts the Packers in the driver's seat. Dude, when you said it, when you said it on the show and you go, they're going to start Carson Wentz, I immediately assumed Heineke was hurt because of how many – it was like three one-score games he's won for him in the last minute this year. You're the Washington turns, Redskins. That should get you a starting spot. It turns out insider information that I have says that Tyler Heineke brought booze onto the plane after their last win. And party. That's a no-no? I guess. I guess in the Marine Ron oh, Rivera Lord. book it is. So, like. Should have went back to the WWE dark side of the ring when they were flying back from Germany. And Brock Lesnar and Mr. Perfect were tackling each other. They called the flight from hell. And they partied with Ric Flair. I'm just saying you used to be able to get, with a, get away with a lot more before 9-11. So, right. it's a lot. lot. Anyway. Jackass. Jackass. All right, we got uh, 
the Chargers going into Denver. Denver is a three point favorite. Yeah, forty this, over under. The, again, yeah. this is this is where yeah. they they don't think the Chargers are going to play any of their starters. <laughs> However, in the earlier games, I believe it's uh oh man, I. I I believe it's the Bengals. If the Bengals lose, then the Chargers have to win. So I I don't know. This is one of those things that it's like they're playing for the fifth seed. They probably don't have any starters in. I'm not touching this game, but I will take the Chargers as an upset all day in this game. All day. Yeah. All right, we got the Rams going to Seattle. Seattle is a six-point favorite with a 41-and-a-half over-under. That means that L.A. must be playing nobody. And I love the NFL, the fact that they put this game prior to the Packers-Lions games, because guess what happens, Detroit, if the Seahawks win? Yeah, season's over. You are done, okay? And well, the Seahawks are a lock. They are going to be bury, that's been a Detroit bury the Rams. For the last 20 years, just laughed, and they were like, he, he thinks that we thought we were going to the playoffs. Yeah, no, no. No, we didn't expect that at all. I yeah, actually this, said eight made this year was my prediction. That was great too, but a great prediction. But there's 17 games now. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> right. My mind's seven on six. Yeah, exactly. So, but the, Haw the, Haw the, the, the Hawks, are, the Hawks are a lock here. 100 percent lock here. Uh, easy, easy lock, and not because right, I, got, I, yeah. We got the Giants going into Philly. Philly's 14 point favorites with a 43 over under. And again, the Giants are the, going to be the sixth seed. Okay. Like, no matter what. So they are not going to risk anything. The Eagles still have to win. All right. To secure the one seed. So I can easily see a, 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 a blowout here. So I actually like the Eagles at minus 14. Yeah, man. It's a big the Giants, the Giants, the Giants, the Giants don't have to play. Right. I hear you. All right, we got the game. Detroit going into Lambeau Field. Uh that line has moved since this morning. Also, Green Bay's a five point favorite and with a 49 over under. I like the over. Yeah, I think there's gonna be some points scored in this game. However, again, what I know jo Joe we'll we get into the twenties. We have no defense, and we can score. I I like the fact that Detroit's in this game because I think it's a it's a, a stepping stone for Detroit to where some of these younger players are like, oh, this is what this shit means in in January, you know, like okay, because they're not used to that, and so there's a couple guys on Green Bay side, however, that are used to that, right, and they're not nervous. Okay, most of the Green Bay players are not nervous. Also, the reason why Green Bay shut the Vikings down was because we got an all pro back, right? And again, we talked about it earlier in the show, you don't get what an all pro is, right? The, David Bakhtiari played the entire game, right? That is literally one of the top three left tackles in football. And so he's back. Uh, the receivers are back. I, I just, again, Rodgers, everybody knows I, I actually don't like his attitude. I, I think he's going to be so motivated in this game that it's just not even going to be fun for Detroit, especially if Seattle loses. I mean, if Seattle wins. If Seattle wins, like, I think it's going to be a disaster. However, well, see, if, if, if Seattle, Seattle loses, wins, then it's a uh, yeah, then it's gonna if, get interesting. If Seattle loses, I love the Lions coach, so i I can see, I can see the Lions coming out and playing, you know, balls to the wall and this and and doing well. Uh, but again, it's scary. I always talk about the Packers' talent because they have a lot of it, right? It's scary when they are all on the field. And right now, they're all on the field. There is not a single injury that the Packers have. So it's they're, 
they're really good. <laughs> like I will so, t- I will say this. If Seattle loses and I yeah, I still say I still take Detroit. Uh you know, because this line might move to six. Give me if, Detroit plus six. If Seattle loses, the line will still be five. You put all the money on Detroit to cover. Yeah. I right. I, I, I it, fully think that this game ends inside of a touchdown either way. That it ends in a field goal. Yeah. You know, so whoever gets the last ball. But uh no, I I I will I will graciously keep my phone off. All right, during the game, Joe. All right, like I I, I will unless you wanted to have unless you want to keep the lines of communication open. All right, I will, but I I will offer you a silence for the game. Uh, I, don't, I, I, I honestly if Seattle loses then I won't be looking at my phone anyways like right. like I'll just it'll be in the other room okay <laughs> but I will I will offer a three hour silence period of the phone um all right because you, know, uh, <laughs> like, you know you know and here comes the conspiracy I'm, I, don't I, think, I don't think Richard I don't think Richard Rogers shoulders hit the back of the end zone and my phone was ringing the with that Monday night game I swear you called me and I was like you called me and I just was like a like you stepped on the tracks and I was like ranting as I picked the phone up and just ranted for like 10 minutes and it was like son of a bitch I don't even think my dad was out of the stadium when you and I were already on the phone yeah so I was like Horse shit only. Rodgers and Brady get that call. I yeah. So that, that. that's what I was going to get into. The conspiracy of it is the NFL is not ready for Detroit to be good yet. All right. So I'm just going to say that it's going to be a few holding calls in this game. All right. There's going to be a few holding calls when Detroit's moving the ball. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. Right, like it's a, it's a much sexier I think it was, story. <laughs> oh, I can't remember his name, <laughs> but I can't remember his name. But whatever, whoever. Oh, he had three holding penalties, like uh, one game, like right in a row. And I was like, dude, what did you say to that ref? Because you know they could call a guy for holding fifteen times a game if they just kept watching him. But it was like, right. dude, so, you're right. Sometimes I feel like they're like, yeah, Detroit, we don't really, yeah, we're not ready for you to win this game. Yeah, we don't want you in the playoffs. Play. You know, it's like, and oh, especially no, and, now it's first and thirty. Anything else? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, by the way, nice catch, but uh, personal foul. You know, like unsportsmanlike conduct. You know, it's like, oh Jesus. You know, so um, the hell of a catch by Megatron there. You see how he set that ball down with one hand. Oh, he uh, didn't control it. Yeah. Uh, oh, the he's rule not be- that ruined the re- ruined receiving in football for a long time. Yeah. Oh man. But uh, all right. Hey, that well, thanks, you guys man. a game. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, it won the Bears a game. Oh, no, then it won the, yeah. The, no, 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 when you guess that when Des Bryant. Well, let's not get too into semantics with that because there was still three minutes left in the game, all right? Like, like Dallas fans all know when you give Aaron Rodgers more than, I don't know, 54 seconds. Like, it, it, it's like, In those days, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In those days, yeah. He could score on you with a minute left and no yeah. time else. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, exactly. So, uh, no, I, I, I can't wait for uh, – Sunday, Joe, it's going to be fun. I hope it means something, and I really hope sure. that the Lions don't beat the Packers and none of the teams <laughs> make the playoffs to Seattle. Wins. That Dude, I, would be I got bad. the white frames out for luck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, anyways, hey, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, sorry for uh, – I'm not really sorry for it, but, uh, again, I'm going to explain to you. Go to BTT's Big Earl, all right, and fill out your poll on BroVet and Karen Vet, and I'm going to explain it one more time. Both of them are looking for acknowledgement for their service, all right? Both of them are looking for, you know, please pay attention to me. Now, here's how it goes with the Karen vet. And I hate the phrase Karen because Karen is usually somebody who follows the rules, somebody who knows the laws, right? All right, and uh, but they act out of control at inappropriate times, hence the word Karen, like you're now being a Karen. Did if you make a had, category for Care Bro vet? I should. Case someone okay. identifies ooh, as ooh, I like Care Bro. A bro. Care, oh, a Care Bro. A Care Bro. Ooh, care bro. that's good. Let's do, let's do a shirt like that, Care Bro, where it's like... TM Circle. I made that for the lawyer. So, so. Here, here, here's the Karen vet for you guys understanding what that means, is that I could be telling a story about Samara Iraq, where it was me and 130 other dudes... 
Okay. Right. And I could be telling a story about a squad level mission, which is me and seven other dudes. Right. And I say, we had so much brotherhood. And then somebody's getting out of there like, what about sisterhood? There wasn't any women there. There wasn't any women there, man. Like, I, I'm sorry. Like, this yeah, I, I did. We did. We didn't see women for 15. What do you want us to do about it? Uh, you want me to thank you for your service? Like, thank you for your service. Uh, and, and by the way, we have lots of female veterans that watch this and are on this page that are awesome. Okay? I'm sure you've done some Seagal like shit. I just wasn't there for it. Right. And when I you, apologize. When you talk about this. whatever you did, I'm just going to go, no. just like I expect anybody else to go, like, this to me. All right. That's what that means. All right. I'll just get over it. All right. Well, I think we've wasted enough of our producer's time who's waiting for a hot date at a Mexican restaurant. And that's the only reason we kept talking this long. Uh, no trash talk hour tomorrow. We will uh, go live with Erica Anderson, not a Karen vet, just a female veteran. All right. That wrote a book. And we'll be live with her in two weeks. So it's going to be awesome. So look up Erica Anderson. It's going to be a great time. See you guys. Hopefully, you have good betting luck. <laughs>